and then I threw it on the ground. All right, so today I'm gonna to start working on getting the truck back together after the cam swap that we did. I do wanna take this really dirty pipe right here and I'm gonna weld it to my really dirty intercooler. So this is a 2005 Escalade, but I was able to fit a 2005 Duramax intercooler into it. But what I want to do is I want to put a little elbow on the infeed side of it because the silicone coupler that I had was actually hitting some of the hosing in there. So I want to have that all be metal and then come straight up to the turbo. So first thing I'm going to do is I'm going to take this pipe and I'm going to make some pie cuts out of it because the outfeed side of the intercooler already has a section of high cut piping on it. So I kind of want to match the inside. I'm going to use the same piping. I do have some shiny intercooler piping that has a 90 degree on it. I thought about using that, but I want to keep it kind of consistent. This aluminum here isn't polished, so it does look a lot like the intercooler already. So after it's welded, it kind of looks like it was supposed to be there. So that's how I'm doing that. Alright, so after looking at this thing a little bit more, this side does kick out and come up nicely right where I need it to. This side, even if I do weld on a section here, it's still going to be sticking out pretty far. So what I'm going to do is make the decision to cut that off and then I'll weld it on kind of where that black line is. I'm going to cut it and then weld some new pieces on. We're just going to do it. And you can see there's really not even that many shavings in there. I did pull out one towel, a little bit on the side here, a little bit over here. Pull the rest of the towels out. And there's like almost nothing in there. I did get another chunk of my broken turbo out of there though. Check that out. Another piece just fell out. Cool. I found four chunks now. Okay, so now that I have all of my pieces cut, I can take them in the truck with the intercooler and test fit them and make sure that they're exactly what I need. Then I'll take them over to the belt sander, take down the edges, get the burrs out of the middle, and I'll sand the edges flat so I have a good fit. After the fit up looks good, I'm going to take a scouring pad and I'll scuff and rub the outsides, make sure these things are nice and clean like a scotch bright pad. Rub that all over these things, make sure they're good, and then I'll take some acetone and clean it. There's kind of two reasons for that cleaning them just to get all the big chunks of mud and dirt off of it. Then I can scuff the oxide layer on the outside of it, try to get it nice and clean so it welds good. After that, I'll take it back in the truck and I'm gonna take a Sharpie and I'll mark exactly where I need it. That way I can take it back out and I can start tack welding everything back together and I know exactly what position it's gonna be in. And I guess that would be reason number three why I'm gonna scuff it first. So setting up the welder, I'm gonna take my number 12 cup off. I use the number 12 cup a lot for stainless. Sometimes I use it for aluminum, but I should really switch it back and forth. It works fine, but I am gonna step down to a number eight gas lens. So I'm gonna start about 70 amps on this one. This welding a thin piece of aluminum to a thick piece of aluminum. I'm gonna start at about 70 so I could kind of work the thicker material into the thin. My AC balance is gonna be set at 35. I'll be using 100 Hertz and about 15 CFH. I think overall these turned out pretty decent. They're a lot more consistent than my normal welds. So for reference, this was the last time that I welded this pipe. And you can see it's kind of pointy and globby and really inconsistent. Where these are a little bit more stacked and the outer edge is a little bit more consistent. So still room to grow but getting better slowly but surely. Alrighty, so I did get this thing all welded on. It was starting to look real nice in a couple spots there. Had a good rhythm going and then changing the angle got a little bit difficult. 
And then this part right here was going along nicely and then I ended it just didn't want to weld there. I don't know what it was. It just like a big chunk fell on and it took some massaging. We'll put it that way. I also did forget to put the bead on it. I wanted to use my bead roller and put a bead on it before I welded it. And I remembered that I wanted to do that right when I finished welding it. So I'm still going to try to use the bead roller. If not, I'll use the crimper. The crimper would look just like this one right here. Just use the wire crimper. So let's see if I can get the bead roller on this thing. Should be interesting. We'll try it. I think it will fit all the way around. So we're just gonna we're just gonna go for it. All right, so I don't know if that worked well or not. Should be, should be okay. I guess that's what I get for not paying attention and just doing it. But so there it is, kind of all the way around. Should be good. All right, so now that the intercooler is done, I'm gonna go ahead and start putting the radiator back in. I just gotta make sure I watch out for the lower hose because that was a little bit tricky getting out. So I just gotta watch it as it's going back in. I'll put the top support back on to hold everything in place and then I can start working on putting the intercooler pipes back together. After that I'll go ahead and fill everything back up with water. I'm going to start by filling the block with water first and then filling the radiator. This radiator doesn't have a fill on the top. It just has the fill reservoir. So I'll fill the block and then the radiator first. Alrighty friends, well I got a little bit carried away. So what I had originally planned on doing was reusing my little section that I had the intake temp sensor in and I was going to eliminate a coupler and I ended up changing the other piece. So yeah, I got a little bit carried away there and this is what I ended up with. So now it's all one piece. It's not three different pieces anymore. I moved the intake air temp sensor bung kind of down out of the way. If you remember before, it was, it was this piece right here. So it was just kind of coming this way and then it had a coupler and another coupler and then a straight piece. And this was actually sticking like straight up in the air right here. So now it's going to be hidden. It's actually going to be down here a little bit more. And I'm actually pretty excited with how this turned out. The welds turned out really good. Oh, and then I just threw it on the ground. <laughs> that sucks. All right, I'll leave that in there for you guys. Anyways, I wanted to show you this section right here. Check this section out. That section looks really, really good. So I'm proud of this piece right here. This is probably some of my best aluminum welding that I have to date. I did figure out what I was doing wrong on this section. So see these little balls that are hanging off there? I was pulling the filler rod out too quickly and kind of off to the side. So it's actually making like a little puddle and a little jagged edge. So I got that figured out. Just kind of took my time on this one and tried to fix stuff that I knew I was doing wrong and make some changes. So getting a little bit better every day. So trying to keep learning and getting a little bit better each time we do it. But now we have this one piece that's gonna go in there. Let me put it in. All right, so here's the pipe all installed, tightened down. You can see where the intake air temp sensor is now. It's kind of down and out of the way. So it's not all ugly right on the top. So I think this looks a lot better. The weld actually looks pretty decent. So I'm really happy with how this thing turned out. That's it for this one. Thanks for watching. Have a good one. Do the things.